Hey guys, so I've been wanting to make a video about this for a while now, but I don't know, I just like it's a difficult topic to talk about and I like I don't I didn't really know like how I was gonna approach it. I still don't really know how I'm gonna approach it, but I think this is like a really important issue to talk about and so yeah I'm gonna talk about it and it's probably gonna be a rambly kind of video. But yeah, it's pretty much not a clickbait video, like this is I'm gonna talk about how I didn't have my period for six years, why and how I got it back. Hope this will help somebody out too. So yeah, I'm 22 now and I hadn't had a period since I was 16 until recently. I got my period when I was, thir I think I was 13 and then like it didn't start getting regular until I was 14 and then I lost it when I was 16. I actually went on the pill when I was 15. I went on the pill for my skin and it like, you know, you just walk into the doctor's office and they give you the pill like so easily they're just like you know they throw it out at you so yeah I was on the pill but when I was just turning 16 that's when I like developed my eating disorder like it started off as kind of bulimia like making myself sick and then um, I just gradually you know started like starving myself and it turned into anorexia and I was still on the pill when I was hospitalized the first time and um, so I was still getting my period then but I decided to stop the pill then because I was afraid it was gonna make me gain weight, so I stopped taking the pill. And soon afterwards, when I came out of hospital, I got like way sicker when I came out of hospital um, when I was 16. And yeah, I lost my period like straight away. So yeah, like obviously I was really underweight and everything that goes with an eating disorder. And that I was at a very, very low BMI for like over a year. And then I started to get a little bit better. And then I had like, numerous relapses like up to the age of 18 when I was hospitalized again like throughout like the whole end of high school like secondary school in Ireland I didn't have a period and yeah like it was just kind of like something I was so like in my eating disorder at that time like it was kind of like a good sign that I didn't have it you know and like I know a lot of people will relate to this that it was like a good sign that I didn't have my period because that meant that you know, I was like underweight and you know, not eating enough and you know, I would have been terrified if I got my period because like I didn't want it because that meant that I was like fat or something which is absolutely ridiculous because there have been like tons of cases recorded where people have been really underweight and you know, still have their period so it's not like always correlative but obviously it's a, like a major factor like 90% of the time so yeah, when I was 18 like I recovered a little bit and then when I was like 19, 20, I was like really underweight again. So like, you know, I was never, I was never like fully bodily recovered. Like I'd never ever gained back the weight like that I was at before, you know, when I was 16, before I ever had an eating disorder. And I was always kind of like either really underweight or borderline kind of, you know, able, just about able to get away with it. And yeah, it was like continued like that. Um, yeah, I started getting worried when I was about 20, 21, but like I still like wasn't really realizing at this time that I clearly wasn't eating enough like to get my period back and I, you know, clearly didn't weigh like enough, like even though I thought I did. Um, so yeah, and I went to the doctor like numerous times and they would always say the same thing to me like, oh, you know, you just like need to wait and you know, like you'll, you know, once you gain more weight, you'll get your period back. So like, I guess like, over the past five months, I just want to talk about what has like changed dramatically with me that like I put down to having got my period back. Cause, like I literally just got my period back, like literally like a week ago or something, and yeah, it was like you know a real period. Like it like lasted for a few days. So yeah, I'm just gonna talk about mm, the past five months, what has changed in my lifestyle and diet and exercise routine that I believe led to me getting my period back. So I guess like when I finished college in May, like all throughout college, I definitely maintained a very strict relationship with food and my weight and diet and my exercise. And like I've done like a lot of video, like a few videos on that, which I'll link down in the description below if you want to um, look at those. Um, but yeah, in June, I went to the Rotto for bike festival. And like, I remember like before this, like being so strict with everything, I'd never like even eat out at a restaurant and I'd like eat the same thing every day. Like just like this control around food, like it was just constant in my life. And um, like, it didn't like, you know, affect me like really that badly, like t the beginning of this year, like, you know, not that I realized it did. Um, 
so yeah, I started eating like so much, so much food when I was at the Royal Four Festival. Like I wasn't starving myself like before this. I was like definitely eating like 2,000 to 3,000 calories a day, but like that obviously wasn't enough for me. And yeah, when I came to the Royal Four Festival, I like, you know, felt like I'd sculpted this body for months. Like I was running a lot. I was like doing a lot of weight training, a lot of like gym classes, and I was like keeping my food really strict. When I went to the Royal Four Festival. I just kind of like, I don't know, like I just like had this like freedom around food that I've never experienced like in freaking years, like literally six years I've never like had this kind of like relationship, not even relationship but just like attitude or actions around and with food, like we'd go to restaurants and I would eat like as much as I wanted, I would eat until I was full, I was, sometimes I'd eat until I was absolutely stuffed, like absolutely stuffed, like send me to an all you can eat vegan buffet and I would destroy everything. And what was I eating? I was not eating high fat foods, I was eating like raw till four, I was eating raw till four at this time, I was eating like 30 mangoes a day, I would literally go to the market after my cycle in the morning and buy my like 30 bananas, 30 mangoes and sit there and eat them on one go and then like we'd go out for a cooked dinner and I'd just like totally like indulge in like tons of rice, tons of vegetable dishes. I wasn't eating overt fats and I wasn't eating like loads of protein. I was just eating like so many calories. I'd say I was eating like, I'd say I was eating 6,000 calories a day. And then I discovered durian, which is like, I know that's like a little bit fattier than, um, you know, fruit, but it's still like, you know, it's not like an avocado or anything. And I started to eat durian like pretty much every day. Like I'd eat it for dessert. I would like go to like the restaurant, absolutely carb up at the restaurant and then like be stuffed and not hungry at all and still go to the market afterwards and buy like one or two durian and eat that. It like totally destroyed my budget, but I don't regret it. I didn't feel like I lost control, but I felt like I had lost the control, you know? and that I didn't feel like I was out of control eating but I was still like you know absolutely like trolling and trolleying through the food but I didn't feel like I'd lost control but I thought I'd lost the control if that makes sense. Then I went to France and my diet in France like my digestion in France for 10 weeks after that was absolutely shocking because I wasn't eating any fruit, I was eating like a lot of starch and I was probably eating far far too much food like I was eating like one packet like a 500 gram 500 gram packet of oats a day and that was on top of meals of like you know um i'd have a huge smoothie in the morning and then i'd have like um loads of rice and you know chickpeas and loads of potatoes and veg and stuff like it was all really healthy but it just like i've had like serious digestive problems the past few years and that just like destroyed it it was just like awful but like I was again eating like 6,000 calories a day, not doing too much exercise. Like I did cycle every single week. I would go on maybe two 30 kilometer cycles during the week. And then at the weekend I'd do maybe like 100 kilometers or something. Like my portion sort sizes just like were stored through the roof. Like even though they were quite large before anyway, like in my opinion. But like, I just like absolutely, the only way I can explain it is that I absolutely stuffed myself beyond capacity, like to, like to, like to, unco like to a state of discomfort. Then I went to Bali and I decided when I was in Bali that I would do Watermelon Island. I was doing yoga, like, you know, once a day, like in yoga, it was pretty intense, like classes I was doing and I was, you know, cycling, like not, really long ride. Yeah, I kind of just like leaned out a little bit. I didn't lose tons of weight because I was definitely eating like four to 5,000 calories worth of um, watermelon. Then I went to Chiang Mai and like, yeah, I just, my month in Chiang Mai in October this year is just gonna stay like in my memory forever. Just absolutely met like amazing people and had such a, such many wonderful adventures and Food wise, again, I just kind of like ate like beyond my fullest capacity. Like I was going to a, veg a vegan all you can eat buffet pretty much every single night when I was there. And um, they do most like that kind of food. It's all very, very high carb because they know the high carb kind of cyclists like to go there. And it was like potatoes, steamed potatoes steamed brown, like kind of brown purplish rice and um, this coconut curry, like pumpkin curry, which was beyond delicious, beyond words. 
so good and steamed pumpkin and then they did like salads and stuff and I'd eat like four plates there like every night like loaded plates like tons of potatoes tons of you know steamed carbohydrates and starches and I would eat like I was raw tofu four again when I was in Thailand because it was just so easy to get my hands on like you know 14 bananas for breakfast and four packets of um, pineapple. I have a few videos on what I was eating in Thailand, but it was always like 6,000 calories a day. I think I have one video where I talk about, you know, what I ate like the day before a massive ride and like I realized that I was pretty much eating that much every day anyway. One thing I noticed is that I kind of not lost my abs, but oh, I definitely got a bit puffier around the abdomen area. And like I've read up on this that it's like totally normal for women to like carry a little bit more, not weight, but just like, it's not normal or healthy for women to be like, to have ripped stomachs because they need protection around, you need protection around this area because that's where your womb is and that's where you're supposed to carry children. So it's really not normal or healthy to have a ripped stomach and my stomach from a young age has always been very 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 lean I never like had any sort of like weight around there at all like not that I have now but it definitely got a bit softer the past month that I've been in Chiang Mai and like I don't have that ripped abs look anymore like I'm still like very lean and fit and sporty looking but you know like that's just what how it is and yeah I got my period back about like a week ago and literally over the past six years I've had it maybe once or twice and it hasn't even been a proper period, it's never lasted. So yeah, that's really like my story for the past, like, well, not my story, but like kind of like my reasoning behind having got my period back is not I upped my fats, not I upped my protein or I, you know, I stuck with the raw tofu and the high carb low fat and I got my period back. What I did was I ate a shit ton of calories. I just want to say that like, you know, it's pretty, it's not healthy at all to not have your period like it's just not um you really need to take a long hard and honest look at your lifestyle and diet if you're not getting your period you don't want to end up in a situation where you no longer you know can have a period and you can no longer have children um it's extremely rare that that would happen that you that as a result of amenorrhea and a loss of period that you, you after an eating disorder that you wouldn't be able to have kids it's like it's very rare um, but you do like 99% of the time you do have to be at a healthy weight to get your period it's just like nature and science I guess no I don't think that I'm fat because I have my period that's ridiculous I am like really relieved and you know it's nice it's normal like it's nice like to moan about you know being on your period and stuff we're women and we're supposed to have a period and yeah if you are you know struggling in that way I would highly recommend you to obviously up your calories that would be uh, that's what I've <coughs> excuse me that's what I've learned from this is that I got my period back because I was eating so much more calories so if you have any questions just leave them down in the description below and I hope this like help someone out and definitely don't give up on it if you are trying to get your period back and you're not getting it back and also if you're trying to get your period back and you're like oh I can't get my period back and you're not being honest with yourself this is kind of like my push to start being on honest with yourself and like look closely and cut out the bullshit and tell things as they are and be kind of like stern with yourself about this so I think I covered everything I've probably left something out that I forgot to talk about. Um, so yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.